everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And today's review is in association with JediInsider.com, your number one news source for everything Star Wars. And for today's review, we're going to take a look at a couple of Hasbro's new Star Wars The Force Awakens 3.75 inch scale toys. Now, first of all, a big thanks to Hasbro for sending these out to us to review. We're going to take a look at their new First Order Snowspeeder vehicle that comes with the Snowtrooper Officer figure. And then we're going to look at a couple of their basic Build-A-Weapon figures with the First Order General Hux and the First Order Snowtrooper. So real quick, with the packaging, with the vehicle, um, well, with all three, you've got up at the corner, you've got the Star Wars Force Awakens logo and then that close-up look at kylo ren with his ignited lightsaber like we see on all the force awakens packaging and then for the vehicle we've got an image some pretty cool artwork featuring the snow speeder in a some kind of arctic battle with uh two snow troopers one is the officer and one's a regular snow trooper off to the corner you've got a look at the figure and then down below it shows you how like the firing gun feature works on one side of the packaging is basically nothing on the other side is some more artwork for the uh, snow trooper officer and then on the back we have uh, a bio for the vehicle in multiple languages, a look at the actual toy along with several, how the features on the toy work, and then down below some other product released in Hasbro's uh, Force Awakens line. On the figures, we have artwork for the characters, and the figures are clearly displayed on the card, or yeah, on the card back. And then you've got a little diagram showing the build a weapon, uh, the piece, how the build a weapon thing works. Now, with these, you know, you have to get basically th two other figures in the wave in order to complete the build a weapon. So on the back, we've got a brief bio for the characters again in multiple languages, and then it shows you how to assemble once you have all three pieces for the build a weapon it shows you how to assemble it and it shows you what other figures you need to get so with general hux you need the inquisitor and uh, that Gwivian enforcer guy that the Deadpool look alike and then with the snow trooper you've got to get uh, a first order stormtrooper and x-wing pilot asti I think is how it's pronounced okay so let's get these open and take a look at what's inside okay so here's a look at the vehicle and its contents outside of the packaging now we'll look at the figure more closely in just a moment so I'm going to set that aside now with the vehicle itself you can see there is some assembly required it's nothing too major and they do provide you with a little instruction sheet to show you how to put everything together but again it's pretty uh, basic so basically you've got this uh, seat piece that you attach to the back here you can see there's these little holes at the top and you just clip it in now be sure you put it in um, like this so that the the blue pieces are facing towards the back it, looking at it it almost looks like you should make it so like the blue pieces are facing forward but that in fact is not how it goes you want to have the, the blue pieces or the blue side of the plastic uh, facing towards the back so that these seat pieces are kind of at a at an angle so then after you do that you want to attach these rail pieces and these are just kind of a flexible plastic and there's little pegs and there's little holes on the top so you just match it up and, and plug it in and that creates this railing and again another railing piece towards the front of the vehicle so you just plug that in and then all that's left is the cannon which uh, basically first of all you've got a missile and you just uh, plug it in and the missile does fire there's a little button um, at the top here a little white button that you push and it will fire and it fires pretty good and then you take the arm of the gun and you take the side that has the hole and you plug it into the peg at the bottom of the gun and then the stand um, there's like a little key peg on the bottom and there's a hole that you match up and you again just plug plug that in now the cannon is made so that you can either set it next to the vehicle or use it on its own you don't have to necessarily put it in the vehicle um, and it does rotate uh, it does not elevate but it does have the rotation and the figure you know, it's got the handles for the figures to hold and it holds, you know, the figures hold it pretty good, at least like the snow troopers do. 
and when when the figure is holding you know the cannon it basically keeps the figure standing you can get it in some pretty good uh, poses with the figure even though there's no elbow joints or anything on the figure so if you want to put the cannon inside the or attach it to the vehicle there is a hole um, on the down here and then there's this little piece that kind of sticks up and so what you want to do is you want to take the figure stand itself and take the narrow end and slide it in that hole and then kind of uh, put it around, push it down a little bit over that, that piece of plastic that kind of sticks up. And once you do that, then, then it stays in there pretty, pretty tight. And then you just plug the gun in and then the cannon is now attached to the, to the vehicle. And again, you just got the rotation there, no, no elevation. Now, the only other f working piece that this vehicle really has is it does have a working landing gear um, piece, and you can pop it down. You can, you know, push it up. And when you set the vehicle down, it's kind of leaning forward. You can pop it up so that the vehicle is basically level. And you know, I think this is supposed to be kind of like a land speeder type deal, so it's probably supposed to kind of float, look like it's floating in the air. And then you can also push it back one more level so that the vehicle is kind of pointing upward. So you've got multiple positions you can put that landing gear piece in. The two back pieces of the landing gear are not, you know, they're just sculpted on there. There's some detailing on the bottom of this, but not a whole lot. You've got a little cannon on the front here, which is basically just a piece, little piece of plastic, doesn't really do anything. You've got the engine sculpted on the front, and then the exhaust parts sculpted on the back. And then you've also got some, you know, additional sculpting here. Overall, the detail on this, I think, is pretty nice. I like how you've got these uh, storage containers and stuff and some, ga looks like some kind of gas canisters or something, and those are all sculpted on. They're not removable or anything. You've got not a whole lot of paint detail on this. It's basically a, a, a basic gray. You've got some panels on the front end. They're a little bit different color. They're more of a bronze gray. And then like the railing is a little bit lighter gray than the rest of the vehicle. Same with this little cannon on the front. And then the seats themselves are a bluish type color. And same with the back there. But otherwise it's just all basic color. The engines themselves I guess are a little bit darker gray as well than the rest of the vehicle. But again not a whole lot in the way of paint applications. No controls painted on or anything like that and there's no decals or anything with this. So the vehicle itself is about nine and a half inches in length and it does it basically holds two figures so you can put a figure in the driver's seat and the snow trooper officer um, is able to sit in here pretty good. Uh, we'll look at this in a little more detail when we look at the articulation of the figure, but they've basically cut the skirt piece so you know it doesn't limit him from sitting down. So you can basically, you gotta kind of stick his feet there in the little hole area that they created. And so you have to kind of squeeze the feet a little bit together. But you know, once you do that, he fits nice and, and, and you know, fits well in the seat even with the backpack on which is removable but he can sit in the seat even with the backpack and he reaches the steering wheel and you know you can put his hands around the steering wheel nicely the other seat you just kind of sit the figure in there you know nothing you don't do anything really special but again it fits in there pretty good so you know you can definitely f seat two figures in this vehicle nicely now they've also included a little peg so that you can stand a figure um, that's probably for manning the cannon. Now honestly, as I pointed out before, when you have the figure you know, hold onto the cannon, you don't really need to attach you know, the figure to a peg to keep it standing. You know, the gun itself will basically you know, allow the figure to stay standing pretty well. So, but they have included one little peg uh, for your figure if you want. Okay, so now we'll look at the figure that comes with the vehicle along with the two other figures, the General Hux and the regular Snow Trooper. So with the Snow Trooper officer that comes with the vehicle, this is, um, I like the sculpting detail on this figure. Now the differences between the regular Snow Trooper and the, the Snow Trooper officer are basically the Snow Trooper officer has the shoulder pad and if you want to pop the head off you can't actually remove that. 
Um, so you can kind of create just a regular snow trooper from that if you want to. There are some other minor differences with the paint applications. Um, I don't know if these are differences that are part of the actual uniforms that they wear in the movies or if these are just paint variants, but the writing on their chest, that strange writing that these guys have, is a bit bigger on the, on the snow trooper officer than it is on the regular snow trooper figure. And then the, the little black on the, I guess the controls or whatever these little things are on their chest is a little bit different. They're completely painted, um, colored in on, on the regular snow trooper, whereas they're just outlined on the snow trooper officer. And then they both have some markings on the sides and back of their helmets and on the sides of, uh, on their shoulders and down here on the boots they got some black skirt pieces are the same same backpacks same blasters they both come with the same blasters these uh, white and uh, black blasters articulation you know again is exactly the same and unfortunately it is just the basic five points of articulation on both of these figures so you can you know look turn the head and you can rotate the arm, though with, this, with the officer with the shoulder pad you can't rotate that arm, but um, again if you want you could always remove that and the other arm rotates fine. No elbow articulation, no wrist articulation. Legs are just done with the T crotch type design so you can get the leg forward again. They've cut the skirt piece so it doesn't limit the movement there. You can't do the legs back. No knee articulation and no ankle articulation. And then both figures have two peg holes on the bottom of their feet. Now with the regular snow trooper that comes on the just the regular card back now and I don't know if I mentioned it before but the backpack on these are removable they just plug into a little hole on their backs and they both have the same kind of backpack and as I mentioned same kind of blaster now with the regular snow trooper he comes with this build a weapon piece um, which I actually kind of like these because they actually work pretty well with with the, just the figure without having the other two parts of this I don't actually have the other figures in the wave so I can't show you how this puts together with the other two pieces it's kind of a strange looking weapon they do provide you with a little instruction sheet that shows you how to put everything together. So once you have all three figures, if you want, you can build this weird contraption. Looks like some kind of cannon on, on some skis or something. But I like how um, these things, they look like blades and you can just kind of, they have little uh, clips that you can just uh, clip on the side of the figure's arms. So it looks like he's got, you know, some kind of bladed weapon. So actually, you know, it's nothing that appears in the movie or anything, I don't think, but you can actually, um, you know, I think it looks kind of cool with just the figure itself. Now the Hux figure, again, I think is nice detailing with the sculpting. I actually really like the face sculpt on this. I think that comes out looking really nice. And I like how you've got the red hair that comes out from under his hat. and He's got the long sideburns. He's got the First Order logo on the top of his hat as well as on one of the um, his shoulders. And that looks pretty good. He's got a little, looks like a little rank. Um, striping on, on one arm which looks good and that's just done with silver and he's got the metallic silver belt. The rest of the figure is basically just black. It's a shinier black on the actual you know outfit that he's wearing and then the coat is a little bit um, you know it's not as shiny a, a black color but it's all just basically same with the hat. But again, just nice detailing overall with this. I, I think it comes out looking really good. Now he comes with this little blaster like we see with a lot of the uh, First Order figures, like the uh, TIE Pilot came with the same kind of blaster. So I guess this is a standard issue blaster for, for the First Order. And then he also comes with a, a Build-A-Weapon piece. And his is kind of cool too because it's like a, it looks like a jetpack. Again, I don't have the other figures in the in the assortment to complete the actual build a weapon, but um, again, it has a little instruction sheet. And this one is looks like maybe some kind of flying probe with with a cannon that's supposed to create. But again, I don't have the other pieces. But I like how it's like a jetpack, so you can put it on the figure. So if you want to give your figure a flying jetpack, you know, that's what it basically is. So I do like these actual, you know, build a weapon accessories with these two particular figures because I think they work well even if you don't have the other other pieces. Now these guys, you know, the coat. Uh, I should mention the coat, like with the skirts on the first order uh, snow troopers, is cut down the middle, so it doesn't. It limits somewhat because of how it's cut it meets so he can't 
Um, it's, he doesn't get in quite a full seated position, so you can still kind of fit him in the in the snow speeder if you want to, but he doesn't fit quite as well because his legs don't come up quite as much with the way the coat, the top part of the coat is cut, and the bottom part of the coat is just that kind of hard vinyl material like we've seen used with figures, these uh, Star Wars figures in the past. And then again, articulation, same basic five points, turn the head, rotate the arms, move the leg forward, no knee articulation, no ankle articulation, no elbow or wrist articulation. So Hux here is actually a bit taller than like the regular stormtroopers, um, or at least the snow troopers. He actually stands about four inches in height. And so I don't, I, you know, obviously I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know if this is a particularly tall character or not, but he's actually, you know, like I said, he's taller than the regular snow troopers, and I assume probably, you know, same with the TIE fighter pilot, so I assume he's taller than all the stormtroopers and stuff. He's not, however, quite as tall as Kylo Ren, so, you know, these figures actually look like they might be in an actual scale, which is pretty nice. I also like the coat, you know, I, I think these guys, I mean, that's obviously is what you see him wearing in the movie, but I, I like the added of the coat over, like, the traditional Imperial officers, like we saw from the original movies, and they look very similar. Here's here's a here's a figure of one of the Imperial officers from, from one of the original uh, movies, and, you know, you can see the outfits look very similar, but I think the coat kind of gives it that almost added Nazi Germany type look, which, you know, is how these guys kind of remind me of. Okay, so that's my review. Overall, I like the look of these figures. I think they come off looking really good. Paint applications are solid. Um, it is disappointing, of course, that they only have five points of articulation from an adult collector standpoint. You know, you can't get these guys in a lot of good poses. But from a kid's standpoint, you know, I think these are really nice figures. And for the vehicle, again, I think it's a fun little vehicle for kids. It may be a couple, you know, extra features. A gun that maybe elevates would have been nice. Or maybe some compartments to store some weapons. Or even if you made these little, uh, these, you know, cargo containers removable or something, that would have been added, little added nice features. And, of course, maybe some extra paint details. But still, overall, I think this is a pretty nice and fun little vehicle um, that Hasbro's made. And I do like seeing new vehicles made, especially if it's going to appear in the movie, as I do believe this vehicle does appear in the movie. So... I do like that and, and, and think overall this is a pretty nice vehicle and should be pretty fun for kids, which is what this is primarily made for. So we'll have a full gallery of images of the vehicle and figures up at JediInsider.com. There's a link in the description below. I should say that all three the vehicle as well as the two figures are out on shelves the vehicle I don't think you'll have any problem finding it's I've seen it pretty much everywhere that sells Star Wars the Force Awakens stuff the figures are new more newly released so you may have a little bit harder time finding them right now but but they are out there um, and as I said, we'll have full image gallery up at Jedi Insider for all of these. So leave a comment. Let us know what you think. You know, please follow me on Facebook and Twitter. There's links in the description below for that. And until next time, I'll catch you later.